Mr. Milton, you know who this is, and I do hope you realize that we're still on for tonight. Meet me at the agreed-upon location across from the bar by the underpass. Bring your associate, Mr. Durbin, as it is a two-man job that I am proposing. With any luck, the two of you are already on your way, and I shall see you soon. Goodbye. Did you see it? He done tore him up, right in two, ripped him apart like a rag doll. These two guys, the dead guy and another, and uh, well, they showed up. I've been living here, so I hid. I thought maybe they was owners or, or cops come to clean the place out. The dead feller called him Muddy. Oh, they was waiting on someone. They were going to do some kind of job, they were saying. But the person they was meeting, well, he was late. So the one guy leaves to find the phone and call him, and the, and the dead guy stayed. Oh, that's when the killer, yeah, that's when he showed up. One second he wasn't there, and then he was. Like out of the shadows he come up. Scared the shit out of the dead guy. I'd like to scream, but I couldn't breathe. Oh, that killer, he grew these claws. I swear it, I saw it. The dead guy went white like he'd seen the devil, and then the killer grabbed him round the neck and lifted him up and started cursing at the guy. Oh, I couldn't hear too good. Something about revenge for what he did or what they did. The killer made sure the dead guy knew who he was and then ripped him open. It just tore him apart. He did it real slow and made the guy scream. Okay, I will. I don't want to never think about that again.
Honey, looking for a date? Ooh, I don't... Well, for you only. Don't go telling any of her friends about this. Mm. Not here. It's too public. We need our privacy, sugar. Hey, baby. Need okay, honey. Let's see what you got. Ain't seen you here before, and if I haven't seen you, neither is Isaac, so that's your next stop. Isaac's in the jewelry store at the end of the street. Consider yourself invited.
Sorry, no vacancies. Feel free, babe. This is a treasure trove of human banality. Working here, you meet lots of types of men. You, you get stories, you get characters, you know. This, this is the kind of place where writers go to study human behavior, man. It, it's invaluable. Writer's such a tarnished term, you know what I mean? It's like, like every other guy says he's a writer, right? Like, you write a letter, you're a writer, you know? It's like, what I do, that's like, that's screenwriting. Like, I encapsulate the essence of excellent film in my scripts, all right? Like, I'm, a, I'm like a blacksmith with pens, all right? I'm a welder of montage. Does a writer write, or does he just, like, ink the flotsam and jetsam floating in his subconscious into a 120-page piece of film genius? But, you, you know, most of my subconscious is filled with old horror films, so that, that's what I write mostly, I guess. Me? I'm like looking to redefine the vampire movie, okay? Like, tons of people make vampire flicks, like popular characters, but me, I'm gonna be doing the real deal. Like, not only is it gonna be scary, but it's gonna be like, it's gonna be believable. Well, in my story, it's not like about garlic and bats, okay? It's about vampire societies and stuff. You know, like, what would vampires be really all about? I mean, how do they blend into society without being discovered? Oh my god! My work is done. Up in. I could have swore I told you to see the Baron. Yeah, that was a laugh. <laughs> Except my sense of humor is a little askew, you know? Conflict just cracks me the hell up.
Good evening, Neonate. Isaac Abrams. I've been expecting you. Seems the wooden soldiers of the Camarilla shuffle in a little too often these nights. That baby-faced two-bit Prince LaCroix got something to say to me? Very courteous of you to stop by. All kindred that enter my domain are expected to introduce themselves. It may seem like an outdated formality, but it serves its purpose. It gives me the opportunity to personally welcome visitors to my domain. It also helps to establish an understanding in advance, so that there are no unfortunate accidents while they are in town. Call me old-fashioned, but this is my barony, and as is tradition, a token of respect must be paid. What I want is a simple exchange. Last week I paid for a certain item, a movie, and this evening I got an email saying that the seller is ready to deliver it. Unfortunately, he's become a bit paranoid all of a sudden. Won't meet me in person, won't drop it off, won't even answer his phone. Says he'll send the location of the pickup to a computer in the nearby internet cafe tonight. You see where I'm going with this? Go to the Ground Zero Internet Cafe. Look for a directory named Joseph K and use the password Kafka. There'll be an email in there that will specify a nearby location. Meet the contact, pick up the item, come back. Not too painful, right? Excellent. In the meantime, consider yourself a welcome guest in my barony. Welcome to Hollywood. Oh my gosh, is that you? Everyone was worried sick about you. When you didn't show up and didn't call and nobody knew anything about what happened to you, we thought you were dead. Are you okay? You know what, never mind. We have to help you. Is it drugs? Something like that? Look, let me make a call. We'll get you some help. Nobody's judging you. They'll be happy to know you're alive. It's me, Samantha. Don't you... Did you suffer amnesia? Is that it? Let me make a call. We'll, we'll get everybody together. We, we can talk. Maybe you'll remember something. The important thing is that they know that you're alive. Come on, this is serious. I know it's you. Don't you recognize me? It's me. It's Samantha. What happened to you? I don't think you know what you're saying. We're gonna help you. You'll see, everybody just wants to see you safe and back to your old self. Wait here, I I'm gonna make a call. It's gonna be okay.
Lovely evening. Stay the fuck back! I did nothing to you! My work is done. I don't want to, but I'll fight you to the death. What the hell do you care? I don't give a damn if you understand. Why? So you can pass judgment on me? So you can decide if those murderers deserve to be gutted? You'll never know how it feels, NEVER! You think your bullshit vampire rules mean a goddamn thing to me? NOTHING matters to me! My family, my children were butchered by small-time criminals just looking to rob a house, steal a car, Take whatever. No sense to any of it. No plan. No ransom. Just kill them because why? Because they were there? In the way? Not one of them paid. My whole family dead. My life gone. I'm supposed to let that happen? I tracked them down. Hunted them. One by one, caught them all. The one you saw in Hollywood. He was the last of them. Revenge? Justice? Whatever you want to call it. All I thought about is taking these evil animals, ripping them to shreds and licking their blood from my claws. I don't know. Butchering those bastards was the first time I felt anything since my family was torn from me. I'm sure there are others out there whose crimes have gone unpunished. At least I put it to use. How many vampires have used their abilities for a just cause? At least I did something! 
I can't turn my back on the evil in this world. I won't answer to anyone and you'll never take me alive, vampire. No one will take from me again. No one! Either we go our separate ways here or one of us dies. Walk lead to the spinal columns of the... <laughs>